So far we've seen that by not being considerate while creating a solid model, we may not end up with a good mesh shape after meshing this solid model. So now I want to practice a better modeling technique to end up with a better mesh. So I've written a script here, modified the previous script to create more key points and more lines that would end up with a better mesh. Here I clear and finish everything that I've done, which is appropriate for this example because I already have something done and I want to finish and clear the database. And then I clear a parameter or create a parameter to convert meters to centimeters. Initiate pre-processing and select element type 185, which by default would mesh with hexagonal element shapes for structural analysis. I don't need a real constant and so I give no values there. And then the material properties, again, from before, or similar to the previous example. And then here I have key points that I will use to create an axis to rotate my base area. So if I just copy these lines, and see what happens. So I have key, two key points, 1001 and 1002, that will be used for rotating the base area. Now I'm creating 10 key points based on the consideration of my model and the, the locations, basically X, Y, and Z of each of these key points is determined by the dimensions of my model, the circular support. So if I copy and paste them here, you can see that I have key point 10 and key point 9, additional key points that I've created for this model. Also, key point 5 is a little bit off from where it was in the previous model. Now I use some L commands to create lines between these key points. Just like copy them in here to see what lines I'll end up with. So I have these lines. There's one line there and that's because I will have a fillet here. So I want to create a line between this key point and the new key, new key point that will be created by the fillet. And then I have key point four there, which I've created because there's going to be a fillet here. That's I'm going to use to create a line between key point four and the new key, new key point there. Key point two is a little bit off, again, because there's going to be a new key point there. I want to use that to create a line between that key point two and the new key point here. And this key point nine is to create a line between that and the new key point after filleting this line. So let's do the fillets previous to the previous model. So they are created if I do key point numbers. So all the key point numbers are shown in here. I want to create a line between key point 4 and 14, 9 and 15, 2 and 13, and 10 and 12. And these are the additional lines that I'm creating. So by using that, I create two more areas, one area here, one area here, and the other area is there. But before creating areas, I want to select some lines and define their divisions or element size numbers here. So using L cell S and A commands and giving the line numbers. And if I turn on the line numbers here now, by selecting appropriate elements or lines, I can give the line numbers. So just copy and paste. So all of my lines have divisions applied to them. And that's because after I rotate this base area, I want to copy these divisions to the other area that will be created at the 90 degree plane so that I won't have to do this again. Now after dividing the areas or the lines into divisions, I want to create areas using the AL command with the line numbers. So I'm going to create five areas. Now let's turn on area numbers, see what we have. Do a plot. Area one, two, three, four, five. I have five areas. 
Now, if I rotate these areas by the key points that I created earlier, key point thousand one and key point thousand two, I can create a volume, which I have done in here. So, using vrote command, so I think right, probably it's going to work. Let's see. So I have a volume. The base volume, which is very similar to the previous one, except I have two additional volumes. Let me get rid of the area numbers and just show the volume numbers. So I have one, two, three, four, five volumes created for me. Now I have to create this uh, circle there or the cylinder, cylinder there and remove it from this purple volume, which I have done very similar to the previous example. I'm just going to copy everything. From here and do V plot. Now I have the volumes created. I want to turn off the volume number representation. Then I'm selecting some, the lines, some of the lines, and applying divisions to them. So L cell to collect to select line, and by their numbers and using LE size, I give the divisions to them so just copy these lines up to here you can see that the lines that were created after rotating and removing that cylinder from the base volume are divided for me so if I do L plot you can see that all the lines have divisions for them now the next step is to mesh, but the point is that the base area or this portion of the area, let me do V plot again. This one will not be meshed using the V mesh command still. So there is still an issue with getting a hexagonal element shape for this part. So uh, let me do V cell S P which means select a volume by picking. I want to pick this area volume. If I could pick that. Let's look from top. Maybe it's easier to select from top. Okay, this one. Still I'm, I'm not able to pick the right one. Okay. So if I do V plot, that's the volume that is selected. If I say V mesh, all, it says that it can't do brick meshing for me. So let's select everything and let's find the trick that would create the hexagonal element shape for me. The trick is done by a command you called vsweep. So it does a sweep of elements and the volume and is able to create a hexagonal element shape for all the volumes. It doesn't always work, but for this example it does. That's why I'm going to take advantage of that. If I do paste and wait a little bit, vSweep is a little bit slower than vMesh, but after all I see that my element or my volume is meshed with hexagonal elements which look better than the previous model. Still, there could be some improvements made to this mesh, but right now I'm happy with what I've got. The next step is to create the half symmetry model. So if I look from top, I want to mirror this about the YZ plane. So I use vSim command. The first input for that is the axis normal to the plane, which is X. And next is the volumes that I want to mirror. So here I want to mirror all the volumes and let me just copy those lines and that line and let me show a nice looking angle. You can see that all the elements are being copied in the uh, mirror plane. So. What is happening right now is that ANSYS is copying the volume along with the elements associated with that with those volumes. 
and I'll have to wait until it's done. It's going to take a little time, but because I don't have too many elements, it's done quickly. So if I do E plot, if I look from front, I can see a very symmetric mesh between along that or, or with respect to the plane. Now, if I select nodes at location x0, so basically the plane at which I did the symmetry, and do n plot, let's take a look at it from here, and turn on the node numbers, so pnum node 1, and then and plot and if I zoom in I can see that there are two nodes in the same location in space what that means is that the two volumes are not actually a solid volume or, or one solid part there are two different solid parts and I want to add them together to create one solid volume that after I apply pressure or boundary conditions and loads it acts as one solid part so before I go forward, let me turn off the numberings of nodes, do all cell, and E plot. Now here, I'm saying select nodes at location X and do num merge. So let me just do that again. Shouldn't probably have selected the thing, everything. And plot. Again, show me the node numbers. Now I'm saying now merge all, which means merge everything in this model that is coincident. So I click, I select that, and all is going to look for all the key points, lines, areas, and nodes, and also elements which are coincident. And after doing that, Ansys looks for the elements or nodes and merges them. So the numbers are now single. So if I look at those same locations, I only see one node per location, which now means that my model is one solid part. So if I apply binary conditions and loads, it's going to act like one solid part. So if I turn off the node numbers, do all cell, and E plot and zoom out, I have that model. Now what I want to do is to select some areas and apply some pressure. So what I want to do is to select areas here. So that's areas 10, 22, and 25. If I do a plot and take a look at the area numbers, if I zoom in, 10, 22, and 25 are these areas. So if I select those, and paste them in here, and do a plot, only those areas are selected. Now I'm saying NSLA S1. NSLA means select nodes attached to areas. By S I mean select, and one means select both the interior and edge nodes. If I put zero instead of one there, only the interior nodes would be selected. So if I do that, if I do n plot, I will see that those nodes are selected. Now I can apply a stress or pressure applied to those nodes and select everything. E plot, you see that the, the pressure is applied there. Now what I want to do is select another areas or some other areas in my model, which are basically in the interior of that circle or cylinder. So if I select them, and do a plot, so only those areas are selected. And I'm selecting the nodes attached to those areas by NSLA command. Let 
So only those nodes are selected. And don't worry about the, the representation of the surface force on the other nodes. And then I'm applying some boundary conditions to those nodes. And then I'm selecting everything. So I'm saying uh, for the nodes, restrict them in x, y, and z direction, and also reselect nodes at location z equals 0, which is basically on the bottom surface, and they'll let that move in the z direction. So if I apply these, and let me not do the old cell yet. See that they're, they're selected and applied. And right now only those nodes in the y0 are selected and they have all degrees of freedom equal to zero. Now if I do all cell and e plot, see some boundary conditions and forces applied. The last thing I have to do is to apply the symmetry boundary condition on y equals zero plane or x z plane, which I've done here. So I'm saying don't move in the y direction. So basically all the boundary conditions are applied. Now I can just solve for this problem by going to solution and saying solve. There's a warning probably because some of the elements aren't in good shape. But for this analysis, that's all right. We just wanted to show a good um, meshing procedure. And this simulation might take a little while to run because I have many elements. And I can see the progress of the simulation shown in here. So I'm going to pause the video and come back to this after the simulation is done. So it took a couple minutes for the analysis to be completed. Now it says solution is done. I can come to general post-processing and I could say PLE sold S EQV to see the Phonemesis element solution. So as we expected, we have higher stresses along the edges of this cylinder. Now let's take a look at it from this angle. If I zoom out, it's from the bottom surface. I can see that there is stresses concentrated about that, that circle. I can rotate this. I can look at the other results. For example, the deformation or the displacements in the y direction, which is, or actually z direction. I can see the displacements of the model. So in this video, we continued our modeling consideration for the better meshing techniques and we applied some boundary conditions, symmetry boundary conditions, forces and um, displacements to solve for a simple geometry.